Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary, it's fi- time for the podcaster who- who's here for you whenever you need it. Uh, on call, a deli- signed, sealed, delivered. I'm b- You're bored. Uh, that was accidental, but it really worked out. Uh, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And here's a couple of ways when your hand hits, if you're a regular listener, this is important if you're new or you're just getting used to the podcast, but if you're a regular listener, when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, try to check out some of these sponsors. Uh, thanks. Uh, hey everybody, this is just a reminder that this episode was recorded uh, a little while ago, but I wanted you to know that uh, Sleep With Me is here to support you, and you can find links in our show notes, and Sleep With Me is here to support our black community because black lives matter. You can find links about that also in our show notes, and you can find links of uh, steps and actions you can take, or if you're saying what, like you don't understand, you can find out more, and you could really take a look at things internally and externally, and slowly, uh, like start to become a part of the solution and all of those links will be in the show notes so i really wanted you to know that uh, right up front thanks uh hey everybody it's scoots here and i wanted to kind of talk to you uh, about a couple things on our patreon that are new uh, one if you're a patron and you're listening or you're not a patron use the same link sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron and if you're a patron right from that link you'll be able to get the bonus feed if you do it from your phone or your tablet with a podcast app You'll log into Patreon, you'll click allow, and you'll be able to subscribe in a bunch of different great podcast apps uh, right there. Just go to sleepinmepodcast.com slash patron. And then you could start listening. Like uh, if you're a patron and you haven't set up the feed, uh, you could listen to the all intro episodes if you're a $10 and up patron. You could listen to some one of the all night episodes. If you're a $5 and up patron, you say, well, I, I just don't, the singing, it wakes me up. You say, okay, well, the, the f- new episodes come out on uh, Sunday and Wednesday. They have no singing in them. And those are full, complete episodes. A full intro, full episode. You get it about 10 days before the public does. You say, well, I like story-only episodes. Great. Those come out on Monday and Tuesday. You say, Scoots, you know, I, I like to be a part of something a little bit more. You know, I, I, I want something that no one else. Okay, 10 and 20 hour patrons right now are getting a series that's only available to them. Behind the scenes of the making of Otter Things. And it's super sleepy. Like uh, you could sleep to it or you could listen to it during the day. And uh, you say, oh boy, like uh, I never thought about this. On the we- some weekends, patrons get super deluxe episodes with sound design and music. So those are some of the benefits of getting a patron. But the main benefit of the b- b- is pride. You say, okay. I rely on this podcast. I know a lot of work goes into it, uh, and it feels good for me. Y- you know how hard you work uh, to earn your, your income. And you say, well, Jesus, Scoots probably works just as hard. Uh, and uh, so I'm proud to support Sleep With Me and the work that goes into the show. And you could do that, or if you're a patron, you could do it right now. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. Or use the link in our show notes. So you, if you're a patron, you could start listening to the bonus content right away. Uh, you just add it to your podcast app. And if you're not a patron, you could uh, sign up and say, wait a second. And you could you could always become a patron, check it out for a month or two. As long as you set up the bonus content, you could test it out. And you say, holy moly. Because we actually lost uh, some patrons this month because they said the, the bonus content was too good. Which I guess I said, wait a second, I'd love uh, to, to, to talk to you first. But uh, so if you listen a lot, that's a pretty good sign. Uh, you say, well, I like to have a selection and I like to know the podcast is going to be there. If you agree with any of that and it's in your budget, 5, 10, 20 bucks a month, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. That way we'll get you to bring this podcast to twice a week for free because the listeners who are supporting the sponsors, and I want to thank Jan, who got some KiwiCo subscriptions for some of the grandchildren in Jan's life. And, oh, boy, did it sound like they were enjoying those KiwiCo subscriptions. Uh, we, like, I can't tell you, like, uh, the fun we're having at my house and learning and just the pride and watching my daughter uh, create stuff and learn things uh, with those KiwiCo crates. 
So thank you, Jan. If you support a sponsor like Jan did, uh, tag the sponsor, tag me in a social media post. It's really important that the sponsors know that you're here in their spots and uh, that it's important to you. Uh, that's what helps maintain uh, the relationships. Uh, so thank you, Jan. Uh, that's the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you need support for self-care, for mental health, uh, if you want to support the black members of our community, uh, and looking at uh, anti-racism resources, uh, organizations, uh, and learning more, you could do that. You could become part of the solution, uh, and there'll be links to all of that in this, uh, uh, the show notes. That's what they're called, the show notes. And the third part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is uh, something I support, and I've talked about it before. I support Bail Project. You could support Bail Project at bailproject.org. And ideally, your support uh, of Bail Project gets used over and over and over again, and it goes a long way. So uh, bailproject.org. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Almost time to slow it down. But first, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show like you. Who are they? Chris Posty Posterson. Sounds like an earful Wrote the theme song Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lecture Also edits episodes too. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer run, 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 run. Eric and the team Let us down They're on the website I am the mystery bar I do the lullabies, yeah I do commissions at JonathanMan.net I'll write a song for you Any reason at all You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal You see the kind Mr. Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, that's where you can find me. And remember, spread the word about the podcast if you have a chance. If it comes up in conversation, even about podcasts in general, you don't even have to talk about sleep with me. Particularly if you use a LinkedIn or a Tumblr or something that I'm not super active on, uh, you know, spread the word. Uh, share about it when it comes up. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. And let's get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could sit aside Whatever is keeping you awake, uh, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, uh, changes in time or temperature or routine, you know, so things on your mind that you're thinking about, obviously, uh, or things you're feeling emotionally or physically, uh, all of those things it could be, or any, I guess, any or all of those things, whatever is keeping you awake, uh, I'm here to take your mind off of stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, uh, pointless meanders, uh, superfluous tangents, uh, creating a safe place. I say that, smoothing and patting and rubbing it down. In a safe place that you're invited to, but you don't have to come. That's an invitation I could get behind, like, uh, they wouldn't have to get behind or get, you say, here's a place you could, you're invited. I think I talk about this a lot because it's just one of the things I say, oh boy, should I, well, now what am I going to, that's going to be a rigmarole when, uh, when that comes up. This is an invitation, you see, you, you don't even, how about, here's a party, I'm having a party. I'd love it, you say, I'd love it if you'd come by. But you could also walk by, like you could walk, you know, we obviously we'll expect it, so we won't be surprised. You could just walk around the house and look in the door. 
uh, or the window. We won't have a live stream of the party, but we will have a live stream where you could kind of peek in and see, well, huh, it's a, like, a, a, like a, it's a, a virtual party you don't even need to come to. Invitation where you're invited. You say, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not expecting you to be there. Not love to have you there. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to totally come by. And you say, okay, well, I don't know. Do, do, I don't understand how that would work logistically. I say, don't worry, we'll figure it out. I want you to be comfortable whether you're here or not. And if you're new, that's kind of how this podcast works. You say, well, that doesn't make it a whole lot of sense. And I say, well, that's you're correct. Correct. You're already you're you're new here, and you're already right. And uh, you're already you've already got a point. Unlimited points, I'll give you. But that was a, or you earned a point there, or multiple points. I don't know. We don't really have a point system here. I just wanted to 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 uh, be gracious and say that you're correct. I'm not making a whole lot of sense. And if if you're new, expect more of that. Actually, a con, near constant stream of me not making a whole lot of sense, or almost make. You say, well, almost makes sense. You're telling me you're working on an imaginary system for a party that I could be in attendance without being in attendance at all. Now I'd say, well, a blanket thing. You, you, you say, well, I would like to be there. I'd say, well, we'll figure that out. You'd say, well, I'd just like to get credit for going. I don't really want to go. I'd say, okay, we'll figure that one out too. So it is an imaginary product. But if you're new, let me tell you a little bit about the podcast first. To, to, so to, to also, before we get into, before I go back off topic about this invitation and party stuff, one of the more popular things in intros. So if you're new, here's a couple of things to know. One, I'm glad you're here, and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. I, I really believe you do deserve a good night's sleep, and I hope I can provide that for you. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is this podcast is very different than most shows. So if you're skeptical or doubtful or you're not sure how to feel, that is very normal reaction to this podcast. And it does not work for everybody. It, uh, not everybody likes it. Uh, not everybody, but those, some of those people still listen. But not every, it doesn't work for everybody either. So it's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, and it may not put you to sleep or take your mind off stuff, but it could. But for the, the, the number of listeners we have, most of them said, G gave it two or three tries, and then I became a regular listener. Like, and I said, oh, okay, this podcast does not make it. He was right when he said he did, doesn't make any sense. Uh, I just didn't realize. So at first, I thought he was joking. And when he said, barely pay attention, I didn't really understand how to do that because usually the, if you get, just like he said, if you get an invitation to a party, it's pretty clear that you're either going or you're not going. There's not a lot of gray area within party invitations at this point in history, here to forward or whatever we say. I'm hoping to change that where you say, well... Uh, may, because they say, well, you could put maybe, but then you're still expected to answer that or uh, assumption is that maybe means probably not. That would be pretty good. Like what if there was a party, like one of those invita online invitation things where instead of like, it was just a spectrum, like a meter. And you say, well, like, oh, like one way is definitely going. The other way is definitely not going, but most people put it somewhere in the meter and you could even add a second meter. You say, well, what time do you think you're going to show up? Party's from 12 to 8. Uh, you say, well, boy, that's way too, okay, can't make it at all then. Okay, party's from uh, uh, 1 to 3. Okay, oh, boy, now you're talking, 1 to 3. Does that mean there will be lunch? Uh, yeah, there will, like, so, okay, how about 12.30 to 2.30? Okay, we could do that. And then you use a second spectrum to say, okay, I'll probably be there at uh, one fifteen, and I'm somewhere uh, on the Roy G. Biv spectrum. I'm like in the IV, the, the indigo and not the violet of like, if that's a hundred percent coming, I'm like pretty close to, in, I mean, in Roy G. Biv, you know, blue indigo. And you say, okay, uh, maybe I'll see you at my party. Maybe not. You don't even have to come though. Cause we have all those other solutions. Actually, by the way, I thought you were inviting a new listener to the Sleep Podcast. Oh, you're right. Uh, sorry about that, new listener. 
So this is a podcast that doesn't make a lot of sense. So see if you could consume it loosely. You don't really need to listen, though, of course, you might want to. But if, if, you, do, if you do decide to listen, I'll be here. I'm here to keep you company as much as I am to put, put you to sleep. And this is this other flip side. This is, I say, a podcast to put you to sleep. Really, it's a podcast that's here while you fall asleep. Uh, there's no pressure for you, for you to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for at least an hour or right around an hour. So you have plenty of time to drift off. You can listen to multiple episodes. And uh, like, yeah, because I'll be here till the very end uh, to keep you company. Like, so if you can't sleep, the the episodes are complete. They're just, com- you know, completely nonsense. So, you know, but they're not total nonsense. So I'm committed to be here for you, I think. So it's a podcast you don't need to listen to. No pressure to, to fall asleep either. Another thing that can throw new people off is the structure of the show. Uh, so just in case that's throwing you off, I just want to set this up. But though some people, like, uh, it throws a lot of people so off that they're like, oh, this definitely isn't the podcast for me, which may be for the best, you know. It's kind of hard to be in a position of making a podcast where most people have to try it multiple times to know if they're going to start not listening to it. Uh, And then the people that definitely are not listening to it, they tend to email me strong worded messages or emails uh, letting me know in all caps why they don't listen. It's a strange thing, but it's an important mission for me because uh, the reason I make the show is because I've been there. And I know how it feels not to be able to fall asleep. So I wish it could work for everybody. And that's why, like, it is important. And I say, geez, you do deserve a good night's sleep because I know how it feels. I know how it feels on most of the things, too. Tossing and turning. Got that. Mind racing. Oh, boy. Waking up early. Wait, you know, all those things. I've been through them all. Uh, But I was going to talk about the structure of the show. So the show starts off with business. And that's how we keep it be, we're able to keep the podcast free for everybody, no paywall or anything, or not part of a, like a larger thing, like an app or whatever that you got to pay for. Then, so that's like about somewhere. Usually, there's like the teaser, which is like one minute. The friend, lady, boy, ladies, you know, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary. Then there's business. I don't know, I tend to ramble during the business, but I try to keep it like uh, to two or three separate things. So the max would be like four or five minutes. Uh, but, it, you know, sometimes I'm not perfect. Probably all the time. I mean, yeah, all the time I'm not perfect. But so that's the business. Then there's an intro, which is separate from the business. Though the people that strongly dislike it kind of tend to lump it all together. But the intro is somewhere around 12 to 18 minutes of me rambling about how the podcast works, introducing the podcast uh, for new listeners, kind of setting it up. And then for regular listeners, they say, oh, this is what Suits does every episode. He kind of tries to explain the podcast in a different way. Over 850 times, he's tried to explain what the podcast is uh, unsuc- unsuccessfully. Because I guess if it was successful... It's success, you know. It's successful in its unsuccessfulness. That's the the, the 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 truth. And like, so it's new for the new listeners. It's new, but then for the regular listeners, it's familiar but new. But the thing is, for the people regular listeners, there's about two percent of regular listeners that skip ahead to twenty minutes. And they kind of maybe catch the second round of business or the start of the whatever we're going to be talking about. Tonight will be kind of a random one-off episode. Uh, then, oh, so and then there's people that listen on Patreon and might listen listen all night, or they listen to story-only episodes or whatever. But most people listen to the intro, and it's part of their wind-down routine. It's like one of the uh, pillars. I don't want to brag and say it's a keystone. Yeah, but I hope for a lot of listeners, it's a building block of your bedtime routine where you say, okay, well, I start playing scoots, then I got some lavender lotion or whatever, or a spritz, or I brush my hair, or I brush my pets, or I stretch, or I sit quietly, I look out the window, whatever it is, like part of your wind down routine. 
Or there's people that start it when they're in bed and they're doing it as part of their later wind down routine where they're like, okay, I'm getting comfortable getting my pillows where I like them and my blankets and those kind of things. So as you become a regular listener, or if you are, you know, test out, oh, geez, this works pretty good for me. Uh, so that's the, the intro. Then there's some business. Then there's uh, the, the episode, which will be a bedtime story, about 45 minutes or so. And then there's some thank yous at the end of the show. So that's the structure of the show. And I don't know. I guess, yeah, that's what you need to know. Uh, we got the structure of the show. You don't need to listen. No pressure to fall asleep. And, yeah, I mean, it really is an invitation to a wind down. Or, like I say, well, you're kind of inviting me. You're letting me in. Uh, but, you know, at a distance, we say, okay, Scoots, you could kind of barely entertain us while we get comfortable and drift off. And I think that's it. I mean, I really appreciate you checking the podcast out. It really means a lot to me to be able to try to help you fall asleep, and hopefully I succeed. And believe it or not, for some people, that like I work really hard on the show. A lot of work goes into it, not just my hard work, but a lot of work on all levels. Uh, because all of us really yearn to help you, really yearn to help you fall asleep. So thank you again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to keep this podcast uh, here for you whenever you need it. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I wanted to check in with you about a couple of things. If you're a regular listener, uh, you listen to the show like uh, three, four times a week or more, or you listen all night long, or you're already a patron. Did you know if you're a patron or if you're interested in it, you could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. And for patrons, if you're doing that from your phone or your tablet, that'll open up the Acast feed. You could set it up uh, right then just by using that link. Uh, uh, but if you're not a patron, you could sign up uh, and think about if you have an extra five, ten, twenty dollars a month in your budget. Uh, you could think about becoming a patron if you get a lot of value out of the show. If you need more content, you say, "Why well, I've listened to all the like I have to listen." To that. You say, "Okay, well, there's like a, in the ten and twenty dollar feeds. I think there's over a thousand items in those feeds. Older episodes from episode three fifty five and up, story only episodes, all intro episodes, all night episodes, and our exclusive patron only series." Uh, behind Otter Things. It's a behind-the-scenes show that you could sleep to. So think about it. Like, and I mean, it, it comes down to, one, do you really value the podcast? Do you get a lot out of the podcast? Would it feel good to you to support the podcast that puts you to sleep? Uh, can you do so? And then the the deal gets sweeter. You say, well, that's the main reward is, is feeling really good. Uh, but you say, wait a second, I get uh, old intro episodes, story-only episodes? Well, uh, think about it, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. But the real thing is the pride in membership, the pride at being a rebel, so rebellious you pay for a free podcast uh, because you get something out of it. And then you support the podcast literally for thousands of other people. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, all right, everybody. It's a Scoots, and I'm doing a board game unboxing of a board game I've bought actually many times as a gift, and I haven't had the opportunity to ever play it myself. And here's a hint. Uh, if, you get, if you get a gift from someone as a board game, please invite them over to play it. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Hello? Am I coming through? I mean, you don't really have to, but, uh, I mean, because I don't really, I'm not good at sending thank you notes or anything like that. I've sent some thank you texts recently. In lieu of a thank you note, Nana, uh, which I know is not the, like, uh, the preferred way. So this is a game. It was a famous Kickstarter. I'm not sure if I supported it as a Kickstarter. I'm pretty sure I first heard about this game uh, either via John August. I'm pretty sure that uh, on the Script Notes podcast or on Twitter. Uh, though it could have been from the famous comic, uh, that uh, web comic that someone's uh, involved in that made this game. And I'm going to start off with the box. The game is called uh, Mewing Kittens. Uh, and it's a famous game about kittens mewing, which couldn't, what, what could be more sm so soothing than the sound of m m kittens mewing? This one is a party pack. And on the front cover, it says mewing kittens, and it's like in kitten fur, the mewing is. I mean, in a, in a drawing of uh, uh, mewing, 
or fur. And it's a party pack. It's a, a play up to 10 players and new, car, and new cards. Uh, play with up to 10 players and new cards. Uh, then it has a kind of a kitten mewing in a sonic way, like the greatest mewing kitten you've ever seen. The famous kitten who mewed their way around the world. And it says a card game for people who are into kittens and mewing and laser beams and sometimes goats. It also has a little award sticker that says most backed project in Kickstarter history. Then I have the price tag from where I bought it, which is a Risa Rocket Reuse in Alameda. It's ranked ages 7 plus for 2 to 10 players. So that's the front side of the, side of the box. Uh, it says mewing kittens on uh, one of the long sides, party pack, flip to open. And on the other side, it just says mewing kittens, party pack. And it has a little uh, kitten profile. Uh, then on the back, it has some art. It has a, a mewing kitten card. And I guess mewing is, I don't know if mewing is the best. Like, honestly, I've never played this. I've heard a lot about it. People love it. My sister just bought it uh, and just playing it with her family. Uh, but it has a couple other cards that we'll look at later. Uh, and we'll talk about those later. And before, I'll read the box. Then I'll read the Wikipedia article or parts of it about it. And then we'll open the box and go through it. Uh, uh, Mewing Kittens, or, you know, it is known by other names, but that's the name on this podcast, is the most backed Kickstarter project ever. Uh, It's created by Elon Lee uh, from Xbox and ARGS's Matthew Inman from The Oatmeal and Shane Small from Xbox and Marvel. Uh, Mewing Kittens made Kickstarter history when over 219,000 people back to the project. Uh, this game is a highly strategic, kitty-powered version of, uh, of other famous games, uh, uh, like running, like, a like, wa- like a, like a kitty-powered version of games like Water Balloon Toss, uh. Players draw cards until someone draws a mewing kitten, and that's probably all caps, uh, at which point they mew, fall asleep, and they're out of the game. Oh, so it's like a sonic mew. So soothing. Like one of those mews that's so cute you fall asleep, and not like, I mean, I guess it's a bit like uh, purring. Unless that player has a diffuse card, at which point they can... Oh, no, no, I read that wrong. Per, per, de, de, de per. Uh, but, like, I think imper, imper, okay, that's what it says. At which point they empower the kitten to purr, unless they have imper kitten. Oh, which can empower the kitten to purr or use things like ladies or pointers, belly rubs, and catnip sandwiches. All of the other cards in the deck are used to move, mitigate, or avoid mewing kittens. I guess because mewing kittens probably want something. I don't know. I'm allergic to cats, so. Uh, yeah. Age is 7 to plus, uh, 2 to 10 players. There's a balloon there. There's a lot of um, confetti, uh, like, drawn on the box. Uh, uh, this box contains all the cards from the original mewing kittens deck, the... Uh, purring kittens and expansion and 10 new cards. That's enough cards to play with up to 10 players. Inside this box is a unique code to unlock a free mobile game content. It has a cat with a party streamer and a party hat on who looks like they just got finished mewing. Uh, there's also like a code to make, you know, that you know you bought a real version of the game. Uh, made in China by Ad Magic, copyright 2017, Mewing Kittens, LLC, Los Angeles, California. And there's a website. It's also known by other names. There's like, uh, yeah, there's other names this game goes by. Yeah, okay, so now I'm over at the uh, um, Wikipedia page. Uh, I just want to see if there's any other details. Oh, it started, uh, the Kickstarter was on January 27th, 2015. 
initial project was ten grand, but after opening it, already had had one hundred thousand backers. So its original funding was ten thousand. It ended up with eight million seven hundred thousand dollars. So that's pretty successful with the uh, two hundred thousand backers. Uh, fourth most f- funded campaign on the crowdfunding site. Uh, first playtest was recorded on YouTube by uh, Smosh Games or Smoosh Games. Uh, backers started receiving deliveries in 2015. All backers got it by September 2015. Uh, there's been two s- spinoffs, Unstable Unicorns and Llamas Unleashed. Uh, the spinoffs were the inspiration of the Unstable Games Company. And, uh, yeah, so you think that's it? Uh, I'm going to open the box, I think. Let's see. It says uh, setup time is less than a minute. Playing time, 15 minutes. Random chance is medium. And, yeah, so I'm going to open the box. I'll be back. Okay, so first thing I notice is that when you open the box, there's a music plays, but it luckily it doesn't keep playing. Uh, so in the, on the one side of the box is like the thing that makes music. It also has cats in a conga line dancing. The first cat is the cat from the front of the box with a party hat on and maracas. Oh no, it's a great, that's a great cat. The second cat may be the cat from the box, which is a, a brown cat with a streamer. Then there's some uh, dark gray cats, uh, some lighter gray cats. They're all in a conga line. Oh, sure. What order does it go? Dark gray, brown, light gray. Dark gray, light gray, brown. Dark gray with an orange hat. Uh, Light gray, gray, brown. Dark gray. You could say dark gray to black, too. I'd say sooty, suit color s-o-o-t then uh brown uh oh medium gray or gray brown uh another orange hatted black or uh, dark gray cat and then a light gray cat uh there's also confetti on this picture and then there's blue there's a cat in the front has uh, red maracas and then there's balloons. There's a red balloon, then an orange balloon, then an orange balloon, then a red balloon, then a green balloon, then an orange balloon. Uh, then off to the right by itself, a blue balloon, then back near the conga line, a red balloon, a blue balloon, a green balloon, green balloon an orange balloon and a light a green balloon. There's also a, a cat with a pink party hat on. I think I forgot to mention that. It seems like there's a slot for cards in this thing. Maybe that was the extra cards. There's no cards in there. I did buy this game used. Uh, and then there's just a two, there's instructions and two uh, decks of cards or two piles of cards. So I'm going to take out one deck of cards to start. Oh, and at the bottom of the card deck is a hidden picture. And I'm looking on the left side. The right side probably has another part of the hidden picture, which we'll look at later. But on the left side, this is interesting. So there's a cat, a a light gray cat uh, with two balloons, a red balloon and a blue balloon. And and it's uh, an orange party hat with an orange poof ball at the top of it which the other party hats did have. The sky is pink to maroon with some clouds. And then the cat is playing this game that got made into a movie, a game from the 80s, an arcade game called uh, Furry, Fe- F- Furry Friends Climb Buildings. It was Its official title was uh, Pages of Ramps. Uh, and it was about all these furry friends, not just cats, uh, but other furry friends climbing buildings. Famous, very famous arcade game. I think The Rock was in the movie. Uh, so that's it. So I'm going to go through this deck of cards first, and then maybe the other deck of cards or the instructions next. Uh, so the back side of the card, it says Mewing Kittens. It does look like it's stylistically very similar to a regular playing card. It's a different shades of red and maroon. 
So it says mewing kittens, and it has a cat profile symbol on the top. Uh, then it has some kind of like a circular designs or oval designs. Then a sound, like the image of a sonic cat mew. Uh, then a border or a frame made up of what looks like cat paws, along with uh, a human hand saying, please stop mewing. A, uh, Zeus, a Z- kiss of Zeus. Uh, a, 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 like a, a, a filer for like, I guess if you're filing your nails in a water bowl and then cat paws, did I say that? Then another border of just uh, dots, then another border that's just a uh, uh, red and maroon and then a final, uh, the white edges of the card. Uh, they seem to be like plastic coated playing cards or plastic playing cards. They're very tactile. They have, uh, I don't know, they have like, a, like a, the cards have some sort of something. I don't know. They're very nice cards. And uh, like, so I'm just going to start off wherever and go through. So the first card on the back side that I found, uh, it's called, what is it? What did I say it was called? Um, what was that called? Emperor. So it's empowering purring. Emperor. Uh, this card is green. Oh, and it shows uh, a person petting a cat. Like a, I thought it was someone uh, like trimming a cat, like a rubbing a cat's nails. Uh, but it's petting. It also has a cat paw. This is a lime green color card. It also says party pack on the bottom left. So I guess if you were like like limiting the cards or something, you'd take this out. Uh, and that's it. Oh, so it says Imper via kitten therapy. And then there's a, so, like, so these are all uh, the team, you know, Matthew Inman does the oatmeal. And cats play a big part in that. But so it shows uh, like there's a uh, a comfortable chair where there's a, a kitten therapist with taking notes, and then there's a lounge with another kitten lying there, you know, saying, I'd be able to purr, you know, if my owner, did, you know, made it more predictable or whatever. That's my projection. There's also, like, a bookshelf and a, a what is that called? Like, a degree in a frame, just like you'd see at a regular therapist's office. And it says, put your last drawn card back into the deck. Okay, the next card is a, a white card. Like, that was a lime green background. This has a white background. Uh, it has a question mark. It does say party pack on the bottom left. It has a question mark in a red, hot pink circle. And it says a freedom cat. And it's a cat, like, uh, overwhelmed with its own freedom. And it says uh, w- one of the cat's eyes has a heart in it. The other one has a swirly... The cat looks like it's about to meow. And this cat is saying, I've had too much uh, uh, freedom. And it says, use any cat card. Use as any cat card, a card with with no instructions on it. So that's uh, uh, interesting. The next one is Beard Cat. It says Party Pack on the bottom left. Maybe all the cards do. So if they do, I'll stop saying that eventually. And it's a human with a cat for a beard. And uh, you see the cat's tail, so it's really a cat that says, well, I'm a cat and I'm a beard. Uh, And it's very funny. And that's Beard Cat. Uh, The next card still says Party Pack. Uh, This one is blue. And uh, this says Skip. uh, And it has a person running. It has a human on it. and it says crab walk with some crabs. So I don't know if you actually have to do that. That would be fun. And there's three crabs and a human crab walking. The human looks like they're not used to crab walking, which is like kind of like doing, what do they call that? When you, uh, a bridge or something. So you're, you're, you would lie down on your back and then you would hold yourself up with your hands and your legs and walk. That's a crab walk. It says end your turn without drawing a card. Uh, the next card is a human hand holding a, a hand up. It says, uh, please don't, uh, you know, the human hand that says, please stop mewing. And it says, nope, uh, Nostradam- nope, Stradamus speaks the truth. Uh, all signs point to nope. 
And there's a Nostradamus-esque character who says, stop the actions of another player. You can play this at any time. So that sounds like a powerful card. Also, it's in nighttime. There's a, a crescent moon. Uh, is then another diffuse therapy card. Uh, double head pat. Uh, so this is something my father does that can feel diminutive or, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, splainers probably do this. Not that my dad's a splainer, but you know, that pat people on the head that you can say, don't do that, please. Uh, so it says pat, double pat, uh, pat someone, one on the head, uh, in a way, you know, a way that it says, and it shows a cat paw. So I guess you're supposed to pat them like a cat. And then it says, end your turn without drawing and force any other player to take two turns. If they play a head pat turn in return, it becomes four turns and then six and then so on. So it sounds like you're trying to avoid taking your turns. That's interesting. Uh, this next card is blue. I forgot what color the one is. Uh, and it's a skip card. It says, Don a portable cheetah butt. So this would be fun for kids. They'd be laughing at this one. And it shows a human running. And they're wearing like a like a cheetah loincloth, kind of. Or I guess a portable cheetah butt. Uh, and it says, end your turn without drawing a card. Okay, the next version is a catermelon. So I guess this is just a cat card. It says uh, a hack thoop. Uh, it shows the cat that's a catermelon. So the cat is a watermelon. And it's saying hack thoop as it spits out a watermelon seed. Uh, then there's an emperor card. Emperor via laser pointer. Put the la your last drawn card back into the deck. And it shows a cat chasing a laser pointer. So cute. Uh, then we have a nope card. So this is a strategic card, I guess. Win the nope bell peace prize. Uh, it shows a human ho holding up a giant uh, c c cup, uh, like a, a trophy cup that says a giant N-O-P-E, the nope bell peace prize. And this one is stop the action of another player. You could play this at any time. In these cards, the nope cards are red. That's a human saying, no, please stop purring. Or mewing, I guess. Uh, now, this is a new color card that I haven't seen. Shuffle. It's a light brown. Has a question in shuffling. And this one says, a trans-dimensional litter box materializes. Ooh. And it has a cat with, like, swirly eyes, then a swirly litter box, you know, trans-dimensional in the eyes and litter box. And the cat is saying, when I go poo into the wormhole of a thousand possibilities, it will break the known universe. Also, it will probably smell like poo. And it says, shuffle the draw pile. Uh, then we have another catermelon, another beard cat. Uh, then we have a new Deper card, uh, and it's very, d d d the Deper cards are light green. And this one says, Deeper via belly rubs. Uh, and there's a cat with a to-do list. Uh, oh, no, it's a tummy petting protocol. Cat's already lying down. Uh, the cat's also holding a pencil in one hand and the tummy pet petting protocol in the other hand. One, rub belly. Uh, two, uh, deal with how cats react to that sometimes, even though they like it. Uh, uh, three quietly shed some tears, and then four, uh, continue rubbing cat's belly. Uh, but then you get to put your last drawn card back into the deck. Uh, then we have another shuffle card. This one, so I guess this crabs are a theme with these shuffle cards. Uh, Abra, 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 Abra Crab Lincoln. Uh, is elected president, uh, and it shows like Abraham Lincoln combined with a crab. And it says, for sure and shellfish years ago, has the Abraham Lincoln beard and hat on, but also a crab body. 
Uh, I will heal these cards as I heal the nation. And then it says shuffle the draw pile. Then we have another beard cat, another catermelon. And then we have the famous card, the name, the game's named after, Mewing Kitten. And we have the first, it has two scenes on the card. It says Mewing Kitten on the top and bottom. And then the top scene or the top panel is a cat uh, uh, slowly increasing its mewing. So remember, these are sonic mews. Uh, and then the next thing is the house below it that the cat is in or kitten. And, uh, you know, it's the mewing so loud that it's like uh, the windows have opened and the mewing spilling out. You know, so, so you'd be in the house, you'd be like, the neighbors are going to hear you mewing and they're going to think I'm a terrible cat owner. And I think if you get that one, you're out of the game. It says show this card immediately. The next one is very comedic. Uh, and I think I feel like I associate rainbows and the oatmeal a lot. Like that a lot of times the oatmeal is like uh, black and white and then punctuated by oat, uh, rainbows. Uh, but it says rainbow uh, ralphing cat uh, and it has a cat uh, letting a rainbow go out its mouth. Now, you know, we, we like sleep with me, you know, this isn't, we're never critical here, but we are the inventors of the Roy G. Biv Institute, which is an imaginary institute for holiday lights uh, to be approved through the Roy G. Biv protocols. And so I would be remiss if to say there is no technical Roy G. Biv. Uh, Roy, yeah, there's no, because I don't think Roy G. Biv uh, works uh, necessarily when you're uh, being expressive. You don't have to. So these aren't technically Roy G. Biv rainbows. Uh, the rainbow writing, it says rainbow, but it's uh, red, blue, uh, red, red, orange, blue, green. Uh, probably because that looks better. And then the cat letting the rainbow out its mouth is just, uh, it's not even red. It's like a hot pink, uh, orange, uh, Yellow, orange, yellow, and yellow, green, green, uh, with some stars in it. So it's a rainbow ralphing cat. Uh, then we have a new Dipper um, via catnip sandwiches, and the cat is eating it, saying, um, nom, 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 nom. And it, there's uh, six floating sandwiches, and then one the cat is eating. Uh, very strongly eating that catnip sandwich down. And it says, put your last drawn card back into the deck. Then we have a rainbow ralphing cat. I don't know what you do when you, oh, I guess that's a kind of cat. I guess you say, well, the cat cards are part of the game, I think. Uh, then we have a new card. Uh, these are pink. Uh, and this one says, see the future. Summon the mantis shrimp. Uh, and then there's like, this is very like, uh, what do they call that? Like uh, the Beatles thing, the yellow submarine escort. And it says you're allowed to privately view the top three cards of the deck, which is interesting because then I guess you would play the shuffle thing if your return was next. That's my first strategic guess. Uh, with these eyes, I see all, this is what the uh, shrimp is saying. With these eyes, I see all things regardless of space or time. Time is but a vessel for mewing, mewing rainbows. Uh, and then there's a rainbow art. Uh, see the future. Uh, then the next card is also a see the future, but it's uh, ask the all-seeing goat wizard. And the goat wizard looks very comedic. It's on top of a, a giant stump. There, of course, is a can uh, below. I can't read it because my eyes aren't that great. Uh, uh, the goat has a beard and horns. Uh, and it says, fortune telling, $20. Uh, ask me questions. I can see the future because I am a magic goat. That is why my beard is so exceptional. Uh, that makes sense. And for this one, you can privately view the top three cards of the deck. 
And you can kind of see how this could be such a fun game. The next one is a favor card. Uh, and favor to the left of favor is a heart. This is like a kind of a black and white and brown colors on this card. And it says, uh, favor, tell your friends uh, the beard sailing. Take your friends beard sailing on your beard boats. And this is the USS Beard. And the person, is, there's a person standing in the back of the boat. And their beard is the sail. There's then there's two people at the front of the boat cheering with joy at the ride they're going on. And it says one player must give you a card of their choice. Uh, then we have a card, uh, draw from the bottom. Take a big bite of your coward sandwich. And then there's a person eating a sandwich labeled coward. They don't look like they're enjoying it. End your turn by drawing the card at the bottom of the pile. Uh, then we have another see the future. Rub the belly of a pigacorn. It's a unicorn and a pig. It says poof. And it's very cute and interesting looking. The uni uh, pigacorn. There's like also stars and squiggles. This is all like kind of a hot pink look. And you can privately view the top three cards of the deck. Uh, next up is Taco Cat, and the Taco Cat is a taco and a cat, and it's saying, I'm a palindrome, uh, which is funny because it was palindrome day not that long ago. Taco Cat, Taco Cat, uh, Coco, T-A-C-O, T-A-C-O. Wow, cool, in the middle. It's interesting. Uh, I was like wondering if I knew what palindrome meant. Uh, then back-to-back -back Taco Cats. Uh, then a double head pat, which we had before. Uh, then a card, a nope card. This is with the hand. This says, please stop. Uh, uh, and it says, a hope ninja, uh, blows, a, blows a loving kiss. Uh, and there's a ninja jumping up and blowing a kiss that says, nope. I guess blowing a kiss of hope, uh. And it says, stop the actions of another player. You can play this at any time. Uh, then a double head pat. Uh, then a card that says, draw from the bottom. Uh, say something nice. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And it's a, <laughs> it's a heart, but it's like pointing at the heart's butt. It's an, uh, like a personified, what do you call that? Uh, anthropomorphized heart. I don't know. It's a heart with a face and a butt, and it's pointing at the heart's butt uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart. That's funny. That would be funny on a card. And uh, end your turn by drawing the card at the bottom of the pile. Uh, this is a new st style of card, and it's cool, I mean, in my opinion. It says, all, it's purpley. It says, alter the future. Go time traveling with a crab. And disrupt the space crab continuum. And it shows a crab and a human kind of dancing within the space, like in a purple swirling space time continuum. And this time you get to privately view and rearrange the top three cards in the draw pile. It also has a wizard hat, like alter the future, like you're a wizard. Uh, then we have another mewing kitten. Uh, but this is a different pan, a couple of comics. Uh, this kitten is at a supercomputer in the top panel. And it says, uh, like, worldwide mew, yes or no, with a warning sign. And the cat's clearly about to point to yes. Then it has a picture of uh, the earth uh, and giant mews getting, the, like, the whole earth, every cat. And I mean, can you imagine that? Like every cat on the earth mewed at the same time, like in that way that's like, are you ever going to stop mewing? I don't even understand why you're mewing. I personally, li like, I don't know. Yeah, but so, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Most of the time, it's the cats don't seem like they mew that much. Uh, but yeah, so that's a mewing kitten. Uh, next card is a draw from the bottom. Uh and it says, release streamers from your underpants. Uh, and it has a person with party streamers uh, coming out of their underpants. 
And it says, end your turn by drawing a card at the bottom of the pile. And the person's very happy about having the streamers launch out of their underpants. Also, underpants is kind of fun to say. Then another rainbow ralphing cat. Then a hairy potato cat, which is a cat and a hairy potato. Another hairy potato cat. So that's clearly, we got to do some shuffling. Uh, then a deeper or an emperor cat card with the belly rubs. Uh, then a new Emperor card via participation in kitten yoga. So it has a kitten, looks more like a cat to me, and a human, a shirtless human with a mustache uh, and a furry body. And they're both doing, um, what is that called? Uh, well, actually, no, because their legs are bent. I thought they were doing um, a side plank, and they may be. And you can put your last drawing card back into the deck. Uh, Then we have another mewing kitten card. This one is a kitten on a boat. uh, And the kitten's underneath like having a snack of something the kitten shouldn't be snacking on. Uh, Or maybe like like trying not to mew or something. Maybe it's a look. I guess it's looking at the snacks and trying not to mew. It's on a ship on the ocean, because then the next card is like a ship uh, being overwhelmed with the mews. Because, I mean, think about it. Like, if you if it's like a pirate ship, pirates are grouchy, and then they happen to be sleeping. It's like nighttime. And then they get awoken by a mewing cat. If it was your cat, they'd say, Captain, we're, you know, it's mutiny. And the captain would say, why is it mutiny? I'm the captain of this ship. And they say, Captain, your cat won't stop uh, mewing. That's why it's mutiny. It's just we can't, we're grouchy. We can't sleep. And your cat was mewing by our snacks. And your cat mewed so much it spoiled our snacks. Yeah, so that could happen. Then a triple head padding, which is more, you know, one more than double. Uh, end your turn without drawing and force any other player to take three turns. And then you can multiply that. Uh, then another skip card. This says command, command deer, a bunny raptor, which is like a dino friend and a bunny combined and then a human riding it. Makes me think of our friend Steven and his uh, Jurassic Park podcast, uh, good old Steven. Uh, then favor. This is uh, uh, get work, have to work. Uh, oh, it's like uh, instead of goat yoga. It's like you have to do yoga with party squirrels. So you're doing yoga. The person's on some sort of, uh, they're in camel pose, I think. And there's three squirrels on them partying uh, with balloons, a pink and a yellow balloon. Uh, Two of them have red solo cups. They look like they're singing loudly. And, uh, oh yeah, the one has a party hat that's orange with a red poo- or pink poof. One has a pink hat with an orange poof. And the other one has a lime green hat with a yellow poof. I don't know, I'm kind of torn. I think I'll just go through the art and not worry about the instructions. I've just pulled out the second deck of cards. Uh, and it looks like the other side of the hidden art is just more of that game, Pages of Ramps, uh, the, the famous game where fuzzy friends climb on buildings. Or let's see, we got, I'll just run through and see if there's any cards that really catch you. Skip, there's a hyper goat, engage the hyper goat, and a person riding a, a goat through space and time. Uh, there's a reverse card, reverse the order, the human's using a kitty litter and the kitty's using the toilet. Uh, let's see if there's anything. Another reverse, go back in time. Yeah, the, like in um, meet visit uh, that park, uh, Harry Potato, see the future, deploy special ops bunnies that have uh, special goggles, uh, alter the future, stare deep into the bum of a cat wizard and gain an understanding of all things. Uh, see the future, feast upon a unicorn enchilada and gain its enchilada powers. Yeah, so those look fun. Uh, yeah. Yo, here's another shuffle card. 
Uh, an electromagnetic Pomeranian storm rolls in from the east. Uh, favor card, uh, where cats uh, are, is that cats? Uh, oh, no, I think those are like squirrels and peanut butter. Uh, give some squirrels some peanut butter. Uh, let's see, that might be all of the cards here. Oh, no, nope, a jackalope bounds into the room uh, saying nope. Uh, beard cats. Uh, evade uh, dirty Sasquatch underpants. There's another skip card. Uh, uh, feed an opponent a nope sandwich with extra nope sauce. Oh, here's another mewing kitten. Uh, this one's like a, like a kitten sleeping on the warp core. And it says, warning, no mewing near warp core. Then it shows, like, the Starship Enterprise and the cat mew. Like, the cat was asleep, but something woke it up, and then it started mewing. And that was the end of that. Uh, then there's another uh, cat mewing, kind of like the game, the, the um, uh, pages of ramps. Uh, there's a cat mewing, and they're saying, hey, we're getting ready to uh, clear these buildings out to, uh, you know, make some new parking lots. And I guess they empowered the cat to do that. Um, uh, there's another one. Uh, Alter the future. Summon the golden-haired manatee. And there's a manatee with, like, a Fabio-esque hair. Very gorgeous. Uh, then there's a reverse. Re re return from, uh, like, oh, you have to go to the vet instead of your cat. That's what that one is. And you even have to wear the cone. Uh, then there's a reverse. Uh, re get a, a tummy massage from your cat. Uh, then another see the future. Crawl inside a goat butt and see many wondrous things. Uh, the kids will love this game, clearly. And then the last new card we hadn't seen. Alter the future. Gr gaze upon a fur maid, which is a furry mermaid. Uh, um, so now I'm just going to, uh, g grab the, uh, instructions here. Uh, it's unfolding instructions. It looks like it's two pages. Uh, and maybe I'll see how much I can get through. Ex ex mewing kittens, the rules, uh, 122 cards, two to 10 players. Uh, uh, and this says, Hey, don't read these rules. Reading is the worst way to learn how to play a game. Instead, go online, which is what I've been doing for most games now, is just going online. Uh, go to um, their website, which is a link to. Uh, but yeah, if you have a other game other than this that doesn't have a link to its videos, you just go on YouTube and put the name of the game and how to. Uh, but basically, this is like, how does it work? Uh, in the deck are some mewing kittens. You play the game by per putting the deck face down. And taking turns drawing cards until someone draws a mewing kitten. When that happens, the person uh, falls asleep and is out of the game. Uh, process continues till there's one player left who wins the game. The more cards you draw, the greater your chance of drawing a mewing kitten. Basically, you, a kitten mews, you lose. Uh, you're full of incendiary, incendiary loser sad sauce. If you, your kitten doesn't mew, you win. You're full of greatness. Great job, buddy. All of the other cards will lessen your chances of getting dealing with mewing kittens. For example, you could use a See the Future card to take a peek at the top few cards in the draw pile. If uh, that reveals a, a, a mewing kitten, you could use a Skip card to end your turn and avoid drawing it. Uh, the setup is to start, remove all of the mewing kittens from the deck and set them aside. Uh, now, oh, now look through the remaining deck and based on the number of players, use the following cards. For two to four, three players, use only the cards with paw prints in the corners. And for four to seven players, use the cards, use only the cards without the paw prints. And for eight to ten players, use all the cards. Oh, so that's pretty easy, and that's probably how the people had it organized. Uh, 
Okay, number three, remove all of the uh, Emperor cards from the deck and lead, uh, deal one to each player. Uh, insert any extra Emperor cats back in the deck if there are any. Each player starts with an Emperor card, the most powerful card in the game. These are the only cards that save you from mewing kittens. If you draw a, a mewing kitten, instead of getting uh, going to sleep, you can play your Emperor card and reinsert the mewing kitten back into the draw pile anywhere you'd like in secret. Uh, try to get as many Emperor cards as possible. Uh, and number four, shuffle the deck and deal seven cards face down to each player. Everyone now has eight cards. Uh, five, uh, insert enough inc mewing kittens back into the deck so there is one fewer than the number of people playing. Uh, remove any extra ones from the game. So for a four-person game, three kittens. For a three-player game, two kittens. Uh, for a two to three person game, the mewing kittens you insert will be the will be the only cards that do not have paw prints. Uh, number six, shuffle the deck, put a face down in the middle of the table. That's your draw pile. Uh, be sure to leave some space for a discard pile. Uh, seven, pick a player to go first. Uh, uh, most impressive beard, most intimidating or 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 odor, shortest spleen, etc. Uh, taking your turn, look at the cards in your hand, play a card, play a card by placing it face up on the discard pile and then follow the instructions on the card. Uh, after you follow the instructions on the card, you may play more cards. You can play as many cards as you'd like. Uh, read the text on a card to learn what it does or play no cards at all. That's cool too. Uh, end your turn by drawing a card from the top of the pile into your hand and hope it's not a mewing kitten. This is different from most games is this is that you end your turn by drawing a card. So play as many or few cards as you'd like, then draw a card to end your turn. Play, then draw, play, then draw. Pretty simple. Uh, play continues clockwise. Play continues clockwise around the table. Ending the game. The last player who hasn't fallen asleep from mewing wins the game. Uh, you won't ever run out of cards in the draw pile because you've ex inserted enough mewing kittens uh, for all but one player. Uh, three more things. By saving your cards early in the game while your chance... You, Oh, try saving your cards early in the game while your chances of falling asleep from mewing are low. You can count the cards left in the draw pile to figure out the odds. There is no maximum or minimum hand size. If you run out of cards in your hand, there's no special action to take. Uh, keep playing. You'll draw a card at the end of each turn. Some cards don't have any instructions on them cat cards. These cards must be collected and played as matching pairs. If you play matching pairs of, oh, this is good. If you play matching pairs of cat cards, pick another player and steal a random card from their hand. And then it says, uh, uh, stop reading and go play. But then there's a backside that we'll look at of this uh, info sheet. Okay. It has like kind of uh, stuff about the example turns, uh, it has stuff about the different cats and kind of play with We kind of went through the different cat cards. Uh, the freedom cat can be used as any cat card. Oh, so you could use it to make cat pairs, I guess. Like it's wild, huh? Uh, special combos. Read this after you played your first game. Two of a kind. Play matching pairs where you get to steal another card from another player. Uh, no longer applies to cat cards. It now applies to any two cards. It's three of a kind. You play with two or five different cards. Uh, so that's just ways to do it. So, so this really does seem like a really fun game. I'm looking forward to playing it probably tonight. And yeah, I'm not, uh, like uh, getting these game. I like doing these gaming episodes, and now like getting them out to just encourage you. Yeah, you get, this is something you could do with the people in your life. Uh, all right. Good night.
Uh, I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. I want to thank Allie, Mark, and Thomas. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks and good, uh, good night. Thanks and good night to Karen, Jem, and Brad. Thanks. Thanks and good night to Jeff, uh, Karen, and Nick. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks and good night to Gianna, What, and Johnny. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks and good night to Abigail, and Carolyn, and Becky. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks and good night to Lorraine, Jude, and Betty. Thank you, thanks, and good night to Jessica, Kelly, and Scott. Thank you, thanks, and good night to John, Dana, and Paul. Uh, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night to Amelie, Teresa, and Matt. Uh, thank you, thanks, and good night to Angelique, McKinley, and Kevin. Uh, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night to Jill, Ryan, and Martin. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night to Sandra, Jeff, and R. Uh, thanks, thanks, good night to Carl, Mike, and Carolyn. Thank you, thanks, thanks, good night to Alex, Hayden, and Katie. Thank you, thanks, good night to Jennifer and Elizabeth. And thanks, thanks, good night to April and Estelle. Uh, so thanks, everybody, who supports the show. Sleeping Me literally exists as a free podcast because of the people that support it, either directly or through the sponsors. Uh, we grow as a podcast because the people simply spread the word in their personal life or online. Couldn't do it without those things. And uh, what else? Uh, huh. <laughs> what else? Good question. Oh, uh, yeah, here's a podcast I wanted you to know about. Thanks and good night.